Hey everyone, Frostfall from the Severity Gaming Network here, and today we are looking at a game called Chivalry Medieval Warfare. So, to get right into it, Chivalry is a battleground style game that was released on October 16th, 2012, where you fight to complete objectives in different maps in either a team based or free for all setting while using different styles of warriors to fight with. The team based gameplay of the base game itself is focused around two warring factions the Agatha Knights and the Mason Order, but the game has a number of different game types you can play and choose, which include Team Objectives, Capture the Flag, Duel, Free For All, Last Team Standing, King of the Hill, Team Deathmatch, and other. Each of these different game types have a variety of maps you can choose from, and there are also numerous servers you can play that cycle through the different maps and game modes as well. And while you compete in the different matches of the game, you are also able to climb the ranks within your team, or within the match itself, depending on the game mode, and at the end of the match, if you or your team is the winner, you're able to slaughter your enemies, as they all become unarmed, and you might also be crowned as king for the end of the match, depending on the game mode, as a sort of end game reward for being on top. So, to start off with the good aspects of chivalry, the game is really easy to get into, and it has an in-game training section that walks you through the mechanics step by step, along with some videos if you choose to watch them as well. The training section can also be a lot of fun, as it gets you engaged into it rather than just having you mashing buttons to get through it all, and it gives you a good bit of information on the background of the game as far as bits of lore and backstory go. The game is also played on a variety of different servers, and it is really easy to quickly join a match and hop right into the action, but there is no single player story or campaign to go along with it. It's very similar to Team Fortress 2 if you've ever played that game. But if you don't want to play with other people, or if you don't have an internet connection at the time, you can play the game in an offline server that you create yourself with bots roaming the map. And you are also able to join and create servers with mods and custom maps if you so desire. The base game itself comes with four classes. The Knight, who is the slowest of the four classes but can deal large amounts of damage and is very defensive. The Man at Arms, who is the quickest melee class and can perform dodge maneuvers but deals low amounts of damage and lacks good defense. The Archer, who specializes in bow and ranged attacks, and can place portable cover objects to hide behind, but also lacks base defense. And the Vanguard, who is able to use melee attacks against enemies from afar, and can also charge towards their enemies. And they also have a good amount of armor, but they are weak against archers at the same time. And you are able to switch between these four classes throughout a match from the in-game menu. You're also able to customize the look of the different classes you can play, adding in different weapons, helmet types, and colors, but a bunch of these customization options do need to be purchased with real money, but they aren't really impactful to your performance in the game. The objectives for the different game types are also relatively simple. It's either kill enemies, run up to something and activate it, or generally a mix of both. And the game does a good job of telling you what to do, as your objectives are indicated for you at all times in the game while you're running around. And while you're running around, causing havoc and mayhem for your enemies, the game also does a good job of making your blows feel very powerful, as sometimes your hits will dismember your opponents, causing their arms or legs or even head to come flying off, making them look somewhat like the Black Knight from Monty Python, and it makes you feel like you're truly powerful and you're a force to be reckoned with. Now, with all that said, there are a couple less than positive aspects of the game. For instance, the game can be very laggy from time to time, but that could also be because of the server you're playing on, and there are sometimes issues with rubber banding back and forth, which can get really confusing when you're fighting people. The game can also feel very clunky at times, with animations feeling choppy and things feeling unpolished gameplay and visual wise. And there can be some visual bugs, such as slain bodies spazzing out in midair, or textures having graphical issues like clipping through each other, and textures flashing on walls, and such. There are also some gameplay bugs that can get kind of annoying, such as when you spawn, right after picking a class, 
you're killed instantly when you spawn into the game, or you're just unable to spawn at all. And in some cases, if you're killed instantly upon spawning, you'll be unable to spawn back at all because of the game type, such as in a last team standing situation. But these bugs can be fixed from time to time, just by switching classes or teams, or just rejoining the game altogether. And if you're playing in an offline mode with bots, the AI for the bots is really bad. It is terrible. They are easily killed in combat, and they also have a major issue maneuvering around some of the maps, such as the arena map, and this can cause them to be unable to leave the spawn area, which can result in all of them just dying, and you being unable to play the game mode you wanted to play. So, after playing this game for several hours, I have really enjoyed it, and I have had a great time playing it. It has just been a blast to play and it's really fun to kill other players and try to outmaneuver your opponents. I easily consider this game to be a good game, an 8.5 out of 10, because it is just really fun to play. The game, however, does have a few issues here and there like I mentioned, but they don't really subtract from the enjoyment of the game that much, and most of them just feel like minor hiccups sometimes. And when playing the game, you do have to keep in mind that it is a couple years old, as it was, like I said, released in 2012. The game also released a major DLC called Chivalry Deadliest Warrior, which adds a bunch of new content, but I have yet to acquire it myself, so all the content in this review is obviously based on the base game itself. So yeah, that's my review of Chivalry Medieval Warfare. I hope you all enjoyed the review, and if you did, please rate it thumbs up and subscribe. See you later.